So as we dive headfirst into volume 37, we find out in this explosive chapter a little bit more about this mysterious martial art known as Six Powers. One Piece, a chapter 304 to 7, Six Powers. Uh, did you say six or sex? Uh, well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and action-packed thrill-a-minute backstabbing awesome never know what's coming around the next corner tale of one piece our last chapter of course saw us finishing off volume 36 and man those last couple of chapters really just took you out with a bang the double crossing just coming from here coming from there the information that's coming about it's just it's absolutely magnificent but uh, the volume uh, ultimately ended with, uh, with of course, Luffy and Polly crashing through uh, one area in, into into Iceberg's bedroom through the wall, and uh, and then of course Zoro and uh, Rob or Zoro, I'm sorry, not Zoro, Nami and Chopper coming through the other door and converging upon the CP9. And I was thinking, man, this is going to be great with this battle royale and everything else. And that's where things left off. And that's right where things pick up. As a matter of fact, the entire chapter takes place just in this room. We wind up getting, um, first, Pauly is, is the kind of the first one to be like, what the hell is going on? Why are you guys dressed like that? What's going on, you know? And Lucci just straight up tells him, like, hey, we're bad, and we work for the government, and hey, sorry, you know, I, I understand we're kind of like brothers. We, you know, built those ships from all those days, sun up to sun down, and everything else, but... Hey, if you don't believe me, I could smash in Iceberg's face to make you know, to prove my point. And Paulie's like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Eventually, he winds up. Paulie goes and winds up coming at him with uh, with the, with this this knives move that he has, this throwing knives move. And uh, and Lucci just goes and she's like, slick, just moves, just finger pistol, right? I'm like, finger pistol. What the hell is that? It sounds like dirty and like weird at the same time. But he basically just just jacks him up with this finger, and I mean, just puts it right into him, pulls it out. It's all bloody finger pistol, right? Um. And then he goes and he explains that what he winds up, that, that what he possesses, or that it's it's futile to go and to fight against them. You know, it's pointless to fight against them because they possess um, the power of of six powers. And uh, the six powers, I guess, is it's some some sort of martial art. Uh, he says that once you once you can, once you learn and fully uh, can grasp and appreciate and, and learn uh, this, this this particular martial art. You're you're as powerful as a hundred men, you know. So that's obviously where Bluno, uh, you know, came from when when Tilestone came out with that hammer and he did that iron body thing, you know. Because then Luffy goes and goes to come at him as, as uh, and, and whatnot, and, and he you know throws out a kick out there, and and Lucci catches the kick right, and uh, and he's like, you know, it's, it's pointless, blah blah, whatever, something to that effect, and um, and then. So Luffy, he's not gonna take no shit, you know. He's a gum gum Gatling gun. He's you know, there's fists coming everywhere. It doesn't even affect him because he goes iron body, you know, and is able to do this. So I don't know if this is like a force of will or what. I'm assuming that it's that it's obviously some next level martial arts type stuff. Um, I'm not sure what its weakness is yet because we don't really know a lot about what its you know strengths and powers are, other than the fact that you know you can do this finger pistol thing, which <laughs> he winds up then going and doing to Luffy during the course of the chapter, and uh, and it, it has little effect on Luffy because obviously he's made out of rubber. But he explains to him that you know if I, if you were a normal human and I would have did this too right in your neck. It would it would have it would have put you down. It would have killed you, you know. And uh, and then I, I guess the other thing that that's real big in this chapter for me that was real important is the whole them finally confronting Robin. And this is really where I guess the lipstick comes off the pig, so to speak. And unfortunately, Robin's the pig. And uh, and that's hard to say because I was really starting to like her. I was really starting to enjoy her character. And there may still be. I still want to believe in the back of my heart, or in the back of my mind, and in my heart that there is um, that, that that there's more to it than we're seeing here. That there is something that that's allowing Robin, or that that's keeping her from really truly saying what she wants to. But it really seems like she lays it out. She's like, because they're like, we finally found you. You know, great, great to see you again. That sort of thing. What's the deal? And Robin goes and straight up says. Uh, no, I, I'm with them. Um, you know, I, I told the cook and the, and the doctor, didn't you get the message? And Chopper's like, yeah, I told him, but we don't, you know, we don't want to know why. Right. And she's, I don't have to tell you why. If I stayed with you, I wouldn't be able to accomplish my life's goal, right? Which we know, from what we know anyway, has to do with uh, the, the true history, that missing hundred years or century of, uh, of history. And then, of course, the poneglyph, uh, the real poneglyph, and, and everything that comes with that. So we know the mystery and intrigue that surrounds that. 
But why she's going and, and still, you know, kind of hooking up with the government, the government that was after her for the last 20 years is still beyond me. It's still kind of, I'm still in the dark on that one. I'm real fuzzy. I don't want anybody to tell me because I don't really, I care, but I don't want to know. Yeah, I'm sure that it'll eventually come out. Um, but she's just real cold about it, you know. She's just like, I, I told you guys just to leave me be, you know. Uh, this is what I'm doing and this is how it is. And then she goes, an iceberg says something along the lines trying to plead with her again, you know. But don't you understand what you're doing and everything else. And she just goes and has some of her arms come out of, you know, the ground and him and just, <laughs> just <laughs> away with you, shut up, you know. So what winds up happening here, though, ultimately is, I mean, it's 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 a heartbreaking, heart-wrenching chapter in a lot of respects because everybody kind of comes in, you're thinking they're charging to save the day, save Robin. Robin doesn't need saving. Uh, she just she just declares herself, I've, I'm done, I'm done with the crew. And uh, and that, like I said, it was a bad, bad feeling in the pit of my stomach for, for that. Um, but then also just to see Iceberg all torn up like he is, and uh, and then Polly as well. Uh, this and then to see too that Lucci and and the rest of the CP9 agents, obviously Bluno and, and Khalifa and, um, and and Kaku, that I'm assuming that they all possess this this power of this martial art, this six powers, and uh, and and it, it's it's definitely on some next level shit, at least compared to what we've seen. Now we know that Luffy can go and kind of you know pull through and pull ahead, and he's taken out uh, he's taken out guys that are definitely above his level in might, which is with his pure grit and determination uh some of them obviously just being kind of ingenious you know with how he was able to take down crocodile and then eventually using his blood and everything else uh to, but that's besides the points getting off the beaten path right as of right now these guys are looking like the big swinging dicks of the of the area of water seven and um and again very very disheartening to see so the chapter though winds up ending shortly after that uh they say that hey listen you better evacuate the mansion because uh by the way everything's going to be going up in flames in two minutes and they're gonna obviously they got some kind of bombs or something on a timer and like what the hell and uh, and they say hey, listen you know and this this makes sense best way to cover up evidence is to go and burn it you know fire has a way of being able to pretty much just decimate and erase anything and uh and, and all traces of us being here because they are a secret organization they need to remain a secret organization but then they're like, so you better get out of the, this, this mansion if you can get past us. And that's how, you know, that, that's how the chapter winds up ending is the whole, if you can get past us. And then we get, um, <laughs> and then I like how the, uh, how the whole setup was here too at the end. You know, so we get the whole, assuming you can get by us, we've got that. And then we go and we get the whole thing about Robin and what you're doing and now do you understand. Zoro's trying to explain to Luffy, like, you know, let's, let's get, let's get things straight now. We came here. We found out what the deal was, and Robin told us what the deal was. So you got to let it go. And Luffy says, I don't buy it. Okay, he ends the chapter with, I don't buy it. And I like his determination, and I'm kind of in the same camp as he is. I don't really buy it either. But I, but like I said, I don't know what I don't know what to presume. I don't know what to presume at this point. But what I do know is that uh, Luffy, of course, he says he's going to beat the shit out of these guys because he told Pauly he was going to. And Luffy's very much as simple-minded as he can be and his blinders on, you know, headstrong and, and just sort of only seeing that one singular thought and focus and goal in mind. Luffy is definitely a man of his word. If he tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So if he says that he's going to beat the shit out of those guys, he's going to beat the shit out of them with Pauly. Uh, presuming Pauly is, is, is still even in any type of, uh, you know, way to... And even Iceberg said to Pauly, why didn't you run, you idiot? You know, his shit's hitting the fan over here. And, he, you know, he obviously cares for the guy. Get out of here! You know, that's kind of what he wanted him to do. But um, nonetheless, so that's how the chapter ends off. And my chapter question for you, though, brothers and sisters, are what are your thoughts on uh, what we know so far, at least what, what Lucci told us, about six powers, about this particular martial art? And, and, and honestly, the translation seemed a little bit weird to me. Six powers, six powers. Maybe it's called something else. Maybe it's called the sixth power or whatever. Um, maybe it has something to do with, like, six senses, you know, that sort of thing, um, where you're, you're, everything's heightened and lightened. I don't know. But my chapter question for you, though, is, and what I'd like you to comment down below about, is what are your thoughts on what we know about it so far? And, of course, it's seeming, uh, seeming that all these CP9 agents actually possess this, uh, this ability, this, this uh, knowledge of this martial art. Let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next Von Nation. Yeah, remember to follow me over on my other channel and Twitter and Facebook and even Instagram.